Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning into the channel today. Before I even get started with the main subject of the video here, I just want to give a quick shout out to Rodian Amarov, who uh, I'm not sure if I'm even pronouncing his first name correctly. You can correct me on that. Absolutely. But just want to send condolences to his family, to everybody that's been involved in his life and his career as he was on, on track to become a Toronto Maple Leaf, a 2020 draft first round draft pick 15th overall with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And, uh, 21 years old is far, far, far too young. And I just wanted to give a quick shout out to his family and those that knew him. We saw a beautiful tweet from John Tavares, captain of the Leafs the other day, just talking about the brief time that they were able to spend with Am Amarov in his time with the Leafs organization. And uh, just wanted to pass that along. And uh, heart definitely goes out to uh, each and every one of you involved in that situation. Hard to come off of a sad subject just as that uh, in order to talk about this deal, but that's what we're going to do. And the Montreal Canadiens finish what appears to be the Jeff Petrie deal, and they send him home. He's going to get his going to get his wish in a sense, and he's going home to Michigan to play for the Detroit Red Wings. Some of you will know that Jeff Petrie's father, Dan Petrie, was a former Major League Baseball pitcher for the Detroit Tigers, and actually won a World Series with the Detroit Tigers back in 1984. As far as the overall reaction that I've seen from the latter half of this deal for Jeff Petrie, some feel that the Habs uh, made an underwhelming deal by finally letting Petrie go, likely here for good, as being a Montreal Canadian. And it's about 50-50, I would say, in terms of the reactions. But in terms of those who felt that this was underwhelming, let's look at the bigger picture. And I think Jared Book actually does a really good job of breaking down the Canadians deal from an overall perspective from the beginning of this trade from when Jeff Petrie was first sent to the Pittsburgh Penguins along with Ryan Paling in return for Mike Matheson and some draft picks. So let's look at the whole picture here. This tweet actually came from Mark Dumas account. So he actually says here that the Canadians have acquired overall from the entire Petrie deal from last year to now, Mike Matheson, K Casey DeSmith, Nathan Laguerre, Gustav Lindstrom, a second round pick in 2025, a fourth round pick in 2025, another fourth round pick in 2023, whereas the Montreal Canadiens have let go of Ryan Paling, Jeff Petrie, and $2.343 million retained, Mike Hoffman, and Rem Pitlick. So that means overall with Jeff Petrie involved in all these deals, the Canadians actually acquire seven pieces, whereas the Canadians part with four pieces. Another positive outlook on the entire deal from Grant McKaig here, essentially Hughes dealt Paling, Pitlick, and indirectly about half of Hoffman's salary from Mike Matheson, Gustav Lindstrom, Nathan Laguerre, Casey DeSmith, a 2023 fourth, and a 2025 second and fourth round picks, Asset Management 101. So for those that thought that maybe Jeff Petrie was still going to fetch a first rounder, clearly not here, but... From an overall perspective, are the Montreal Canadiens better from dealing Jeff Petrie the first time to the second time? I would say the answer to that question most obviously is nobody really knows for sure yet because a lot of these pieces are draft picks, are prospects, and we don't know what they're going to be yet. So let's talk about Gustav Lindstrom, six foot two defenseman, 24 years old, 183 pounds. He comes from the Detroit Red Wings, the Steve Eiserman built Detroit Red Wings. So of course he comes from a, a good system, you would think, in terms of player development with Stevie Y being at the helm as general manager. But besides that, He's similar to Petrie in terms of his positioning. I'm not saying anything about the player in comparing the two, but he's a right shot defenseman adding only to the depth on the right side that the Canadians actually have right now, as we know. And he's got potential. And, and honestly, when you look at what he's played so far in the NHL, 128 games played, two goals, 23 assists, 25 points in those 128 games, 56 penalty minutes thus far. And you look at quick highlights of him and you're like, okay, this guy might be able to compete for Justin Barron's spot on the roster this year, but I don't know who's got the leg up there. I think that everyone believes that Justin Barron has the higher ceiling as a right shot defenseman for the Canadians. And you know what? I feel like I've been so hard on Justin Barron lately, especially watching him last season. And I thought, you know, here's his immediate replacement potentially in Lindstrom. And I, I don't know that much about Lindstrom other than looking at his numbers and a few highlights. So I'm not going to make any predeterminations, but I would like to think, based on what I have seen from Justin Barron so far, I would still like to think 
that he has the higher ceiling than Lindstrom right now. Lindstrom's turning 25 this year, and Justin Barron is turning 22. So still three years apart in that regard. But, uh, you know, you look at Justin Barron's stats, and in 46 games played with the Montreal Canadiens, five goals, 12 assists, 17 points in those 46 games and 20 penalty minutes. And Justin Barron's stature is basically the exact same, except he's a little bit thicker. And I still think, based on what I've seen from him, maybe it's just because he looks taller on skates. I don't know. But I still think Justin Barron could fill out in terms of muscle. And I would like to just see him be a little tougher to play against. I guess you could probably say the same about Jordan Harris. Different players, mind you, but you want to see these guys be able to stay on their feet a bit more and be a bit more physical in the corners. If you watch the press conference with Kent Hughes, there was actually a bunch of information that was thrown around and came out of it, actually, in, in terms of the salary cap. Paul Byron retiring as a Montreal Canadian and from the NHL in general. Logan Mayu has not heard back from Gary Bettman if he's going to be reinstated in the NHL, which we still expect that he will, but that answer simply hasn't come yet. If there was anything that was even a bit exciting coming out of this press conference with Kent Hughes, and for me, watching all the years of Habs, the Habs being very inactive at free agency, except for, again, the Sebastian Ajo offer sheet that never manifested into anything except for a contract for Sebastian Ajo and eventually an extension with Carolina. But what I did like hearing from Kent Hughes' mouth, which some of you may have heard if you stayed tuned to the end, was that the Canadians are acquiring a lot of draft capital that they are probably going to use in an overpayment, potentially in free agency to a player during this rebuilding era with the likes of Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield, and Kirby Doc. During this era, Kent Hughes is basically acknowledging that when the time is right, and he flat out said this, when the time is right, they are likely going to overpay for a free agent and have that player come in and help the Habs in their contending window. Music to my ears after all these years of watching the Canadians be inactive and seeing other teams in our division overpay and get better with free agents. Now, mind you, if you look at certain signings, you can say that there were overpayments that haven't yielded the results for those overpayments in terms of John Tavares as an example. Now, in terms of Tavares' numbers, you can look at him and say he's delivered on his promise, but as far as the team goes, you know you know how it goes. I'm glad this piece of business is done, and also from Eric Engels finding out that, yeah, in, in fact, you know, Kent Hughes did Jeff Petrie a solid here in trading him before the school season starts. He's got four kids, him and his wife have four kids, and... This was a, a solid move in keeping the relationship in a good position with Jeff Petrie and future players that the Canadians are hoping to acquire. And Kent Hughes was asked that from Stu Cowan about how the way he treats players in these deals, signing them, trading them, et cetera, that hopefully that new players that are thinking about coming to the Canadians in free agency will catch on and want to be a part of an org organization that treats their players as well as the Canadians are doing right now. All right, guys, that's all I got. I got to go to my playoff ball hockey game, and I don't know if I've had a chance to tell you guys, but the actual name of my newer ball hockey team is, in fact, Deeks of Hazard. So I just thought I would share that with you guys. That was pretty fun, but um, I didn't even ask my team to put my own YouTube name in there, but it happened. So that was kind of fun to see that. But anyway, guys, Leave your comment down below. Let me know what you think of this deal for Jeff Petrie. Is it underwhelming? Is it, are you satisfied? Are you realizing that this is still not the final deal and that there's going to be many more coming over the next few seasons to continue the Canadians rebuild along the right path, doing it the right way at the right time. I know that's where I'm at. That's the hope we have with this regime right now with Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon at the helm. So I'm encouraged still. I'm glad this deal got done now, and hopefully I can take another little break again here. And I know that you guys appreciate uh, the fact that I get to take these breaks for my mental health and just for my health in general, and just also to keep my love for doing this fresh so that when you guys tune in, I'm here ready to go. And again, I thank you very much for tuning in. Hit like, hit subscribe if you enjoy what you're seeing here, guys. And I will talk to you very soon. All my best.